Now we know how to find a path through the graph, but it's not the fastest path through the graph. It can actually be very slow at times. So let's try and develop an algorithm that can get us there faster. And to do that, we're going to attack the stack that we used, which is stack attack, to keep track of our progress through the graph. Our behavior was that we would push things on top, push things on top of the stack. So we would go, for example, A, B, E, that's a B. And whichever was the top thing on the stack, we would consider to be our current node. And then we, when we were done with something, when we found a dead end, we would pop it off the stack. We're going to use a different method now. We're still going to push things onto the top of the stack, like this. Here's B, and here's D. But we're going to regard the bottom item as the top, as the uh, current item in the stack. And when we pop things from the stack, we're going to pop them from the bottom instead of from the top. And what this will do is it will let us maintain a stack that has items that are always the same distance from our starting point. And that'll be important, so we won't get too far in any direction, which means we'll end up with a, an, a path at the end that is the shortest path. So let's walk through an example here. I'm going to go back here. Okay, so we start with A on our stack. This is the starting node, and it's the current node, so I'm going to color it green. So there are a few vital differences between this algorithm and the previous one. The first one is that now when we add um, nodes to our stack, we're going to take a look at all of A's neighbors and add them all at the same time. So let's first add B and then D. We're going to add them both at the same time before we do anything. So this is, uh, this is the main difference between this algorithm and the previous one. The previous algorithm would jump to a node and then continue following edges for as far as it could go. That's why it was a depth first search. It searched the depth of the tree first. But with this one, we add all of the neighbors and then we take the next step. So we're looking in more of a breadth sort of fashion, and that's actually the name of this algorithm. The breadth first search. Because we're gonna look at all of A's neighbors before we continue, okay? So we push B and D on the stack, and we're also gonna mark every time we add something to the stack, we're gonna mark it as seen. So I'm going to put our familiar little stars right here to mark that we've seen both of these. So now we're done, and we can pop A off the stack. So we're going to remove it here and remove it here just so that we can see what's going on. And now we can continue to the next step. Since we popped A off the bottom of the stack, that makes B our current item. So I'm going to circle B in green here. Okay. And then we're going to continue this uh, exercise again. We're going to add all of B's neighbors to the stack. And we're going to push them on the top. A we've seen already, so we're not going to do that. We're going to ignore A. But E is one of B's neighbors, so we'll push that onto the stack. And C is one of B's neighbors, so we'll push that onto the stack. So let me draw them here on our stack, E and C, okay? And we are going to mark them as having been seen. And then finally, we're going to pop B off of the bottom of the stack. B is gone, so we move up the stack to the next guy. The next guy is D. So let me circle D as green here. D is green because he's the top guy in the stack. In this case, both of D's neighbors have already been seen. They have little stars by them. 
So we don't add anything to the top of the stack. We just pop D off and continue our algorithm. The next guy on the stack is E, so E will be the current node next. Okay, E's neighbors are D, B, and F. D and B we've already seen, so we can ignore them, but F is the goal node, it's the goal node. So we're done. Our path is from A to B to E to F. Before we continue, I'd like to write down the important differences here. We push to the top, just like before, but then we pop from the bottom. And then the other important difference is that we push all neighbor nodes before we continue. So th this is the major difference between breadth first search and depth first search, which we covered before. Now we have a little bit of a problem because at the end of the depth first search, we had on our stack the path that we took. It was A, B, E, F. But here we don't have that anymore. We popped off A and B, and anyway, we had D in the way. And here's C, and there's just, there's just no path here. So how do we deal with that? Well, we have to add an additional step, which is a reconstruction step. As we're traveling through the graph, Every time we push a node onto the graph, we're going to add a pointer that said, okay, where did we arrive at that node from? We arrived at B from A, and we arrived at D from A. We arrived at C and E from B, and we arrived at F from E. So now we can start at F, and we can just follow these red arrows backwards. From F we go to E, from U would go to B, and from B we go to A. So that is the last major difference between breadth first and depth first searches, is that we have to reconstruct our path as soon as we're done. So it's a little bit more work, but it will always get you the shortest path. So. Uh, oh, one more note is that because we're using this new structure, this new way of, of using the stack where we push on the top and we pull from the bottom, we can no longer use a vector. With vectors, you can only push and pull from the top. They're very efficient when you're pushing and pulling from the bottom or when you're trying to insert something in the middle. So instead, we're going to use something called a deck. I know it looks like DQ, in fact I know it looks horrible in my bad handwriting, but this is pronounced DEC. And it's a special data structure that lets you push and pull from both ends. Push and, I keep saying push and pull, I mean push and pop. It lets you push and pop from the top or from the bottom very quickly. You still can't insert things in the middle, that's still an expensive operation, but we don't need to do that. So armed with our decks, you know, our algorithms, let's go look at some code. So here's the algorithm. Again, this is the complete all at once algorithm, but we'll step through it, step one step at a time in a bit. First, we push the first node onto the stack and mark it as seen. And then for every edge in our current node, we, let's see, we test if it's the target node and I'll get back to what happens there later. But if it's not, then we push all of the neighboring nodes onto the stack. We mark them at mark. Um, we mark them as red, or what am I talking about? Mark them as seen. <laughs> mark them as red. I guess I've been um, looking at my RSS reader recently. And then we save where we got to that node from, so that we can reconstruct the graph, the path later. And then 
we do that for all edges and then we pop from the front. Notice how we pushed to the back to add the neighbor. We pop from the front when we're done adding neighbors. When we finally get to the target node, when we get to the target node, we have to reconstruct the path. And to do that, we use this while loop. This means that as long as there is a this path from variable, which we filled out right down here, as long as it's filled out, then we'll follow it and push it onto our path stack. So a little bit more complicated, but it will always get us the shortest path. So let's see it in action one step at a time. So first, here's our starting node. We've already marked it as red. And then we're going to put push all of its neighbors onto the stack. You can see here that these little black boxes represent the path from. So they mean that to get from the blue node to the green node, we're following the direction of these boxes. So then we're going to mark them as red. And then we're going to pop from the bottom of the stack, or from the front, the green box. Once it gets popped, then the next lower thing on the stack becomes the current node. So we're going to add its neighbors, but only the neighbors that we haven't seen yet. See, that's why we're marking these little boxes, uh, because we are not going to add the original box back because we've already seen it. We're going to mark the new one as red, as I did it again, as seen, and then we pop that guy off the stack. Notice that we don't go to the blue box. We go to the one that's, we don't go to the one that was just added. We want, went to the one that we added earlier because that's how that first search works. So then we continue this process. We add new neighbors. We mark them as seen, not red, but seen. And we pop this guy off the stack. And then finally, when we go to add new neighbors, we are going to add our target node. And so we're done. And so it's time to reconstruct the stack. If you start at the orange node, you start at the orange node and follow the motion of the boxes, you'll get from the orange node to the green node and from the green node to this gray node up top and then from that gray node to the beginning node where we started at. And so when we use that data to reconstruct the path, there's our red path. There it is. So to get from the starting node to the target node, you just follow the red path. So that's great. Next week, we're going to look at how to handle uneven terrain, terrain with obstacles in it, terrain where you move slower if you go through this terrain versus that terrain, or maybe terrain that you want to avoid because it is, it is occupied by the enemy. We're going to do all that next week. See you then.